Many of us have genius within us. We have ideas. We use it for the company. We put in long hours, 60, 70 hours a week. We'll break our backs for the company. But when it comes to us, when it comes to using our genius in our own behalf, taking a chance with our own creativeness, acting on our own dreams and ideas, somewhere along the line, we get paralyzed. We find some reason not to do it. Oh, I did that. I'm not as good as they are. I don't have their education. I felt inferior because I never had a college education. So I felt inferior. I thought people with college education were the most intelligent people in the world. And I felt inferior and intimidated by them. So I wouldn't want to speak before people that had more education than I did. What? Come on, Les, you can do that. Oh, no, I can't. Les, you're a good speaker, man. You can just communicate with people, period. There's just some things I just don't know. And I just, can I pass? You know, get somebody else. I got a friend, man. He, This guy has a master's degree. He's real good. You know, get him. But I just, I'm not the one to come speak to that group. See, I didn't know what I had in my hands. And fortunately, I had somebody around me who saw what I had and was willing to work with me until I could see it too. See, that's what many times we have to have. Somebody could look beyond our thoughts and see our needs and hold that vision until we are able to capture that vision ourselves. How do we handle some fears? I was talking with my friend, Pat Johnson. Here's one thing she said. If you got a, a real major fear, she said, take a deep breath and see yourself strong enough and more than able to handle that fear, whatever it is. Everybody take a deep breath. Whatever that feels, just feel that you have the strength and the power and the capacity to handle it. Another friend of mine, Ron Weiner, he says, when I'm confronted with a fear, I just practice the art of looking beyond the fear. I go behind it and see it already completed, see it already resolved. And then I carry myself accordingly as if it already is taken care of. That dispels the fear for me. Another friend of mine by the name of Jack Wilson said, when I experience fear, I think about when I was in Vietnam and what I handled back then and I look at what I'm dealing with right now and the fact that I survived that, the fact that I had other kinds of situations that were close calls or that I was overwhelmed with fear and I came through it, then I look at this and says, this is nothing here. And we've all had that experience with Jack had. How many of you had some situations that you were in that you're overwhelmed with fear? You didn't know how you're gonna come out, how you're gonna survive, and you did. You survived and you didn't die. So what you gotta do, whatever that was, whatever that state of consciousness, whatever that self-confidence that you had, however you stood up within yourself. Here's what we know. You survived. Here's what we know. You're still here. You didn't die. Hello. You did not die. You didn't die. You hear that? You didn't die. You're here right now. You got it and you handled that fear. You kicked it out of there. Remember that play Color Purple? I remember when, when Alba told the girl she couldn't go with sure. She was afraid. She felt incompetent and he said, where are you going? You can't talk. Sure can talk. You ugly. You dumb. She got class. You ain't got nothing. Where you going? You ain't going to make it. You're going to fail. She said, look here, I might be ugly. I might be dumb. I might can't talk. She said, but I'm still here. And so as you begin to look at the fears in back of you, you came through those fears and you're still here. See, that's a testament about how powerful you are. And so whatever the volcano is, you have the capacity to take that volcano on, the capacity to jump in it and find your true identity. Here's another thing to keep a lot of people from taking on the volcanoes and jumping into the challenges that they're confronted with, the fear of making mistakes or not feeling good enough. Guess what? You're gonna make some mistakes. You're gonna make a lot of mistakes. Guy said this and it's true. He said the person who has never made a mistake hasn't done anything. If you're gonna make some mistakes if you wanna do something out here, you're gonna fall flat on your face. You're gonna be criticized when you come out into the arena called life. You're gonna feel awkward and stupid and dumb sometimes. It goes with the territory, but it's okay. What's important is that you bring your stuff out here. Are you good enough? Prepare yourself. See, there's no substitute for competency. A positive attitude won't get it. Being enthusiastic won't get it. So you gotta prepare yourself. You've got to develop yourself. You've got to practice. You've got to work. You've got to do your homework. You've got to do your research. See, a lot of people have a yes, I can attitude, but a no, I can't aptitude. And competency builds confidence and confidence feeds into competency. See, the better you become, the more confident you feel, and the more confident you feel, the better you want to become. You realize that you have no ceiling, that you can better whatever you've done so far. You can go beyond that. You don't become cocky and arrogant, feeling that you've already arrived, as most people have. And that's why they've settled for less than what they rightly deserve in life, because they feel they have arrived, and they say, well, I can rest now. I can rest on my laurels now. I've, I've made it. No, no, no. Long as you're breathing, you've got some more work to do. 
there's something else for you to achieve. The publisher of USA Today said that unless you've made some major mistakes in life, you haven't started living yet. So a lot of people, if you've never made any major blunders, made some major mistakes, lost some serious money, taken some serious risks, you haven't started living yet. You don't call that living, not rocking the boat, going through life quietly, tiptoeing safely to an early grave. No, 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 no. You got to take some chances. You want to bring some adventure to your life. See, a lot of people, because they don't want to make any mistakes, it takes us to the next level. A lot of people don't want to fail. Fear of failure, fear of success, and guess what else? Fear of the unknown. I saw a guy last week, came up to visit me, haven't seen him for years, Bob Boyd from Columbus, Ohio. Bob Boyd introduced me to motivational tapes, introduced me to a lot of motivational speakers and positive thinking. Bob Boyd, that I know has been involved, personally I know, and I've been involved in business deals with him. Bob has had at least 30 failures that I know, 30 business failures since I've known him since 1972. Incredible, so I wanted to hear this deal that Bob was bringing me. Les, I've got to talk to you. So he came in in the traditional Bob Boyd fashion. Hello, Les, how you doing? Bob said, Les Brown, I've got a deal. You know, you get exposure to a lot of people. Man, I've got a deal. I'm thinking, is he want me to join Amway? What is this? Man, I've got something going. Man, this thing, man, Les, it's a money machine. Tell me about it, Bob. But here's what was going on in my mind. Bob didn't mention anything about all the losses, deals we'd lost some money on. He, it never came up in conversation. It was like this is the first deal he ever brought me. I said, what courage? You know what the church has said about courage? He said, courage is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. So you want to courageously hold on to your dream and not lose enthusiasm. See, Bob has not internalized failure. They just didn't work out the way he wanted them to work out. He's still looking for his pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Bless, let me tell you something, man. You've got to see this deal with the things you're doing. You're now on PBS. Bless, you'll make a fortune, man. I just can't wait to tell you about it. I said, tell me, Bob, tell me. He said, now explain to me what I just told you. I said, I don't know what it is, but I want to do it. I want to do it. I didn't even no. So I like the fact that Bob has not lost his fire. Bob is still hungry. Bob still sees his dream. Bob is still searching for a way to make it happen. He doesn't care about people talking about it. Man, he's never kept a job. Guys had 15 or 20 different jobs. All these business deals. Bob has turned a deaf ear to that. A guy in Los Angeles, all over the front page of the newspaper, he just passed the bar after taking it 48 times. He had more than enough reason and excuses not to take it. His son has a law firm. He could have been a legal assistant, a clerk. And people all of a sudden used to laugh at this guy. He was a laughing stock. Are you taking the bar lately? People will do that too. You know, people talk about John Kennedy Jr. failing the bar. Did you read in the newspaper that he passed? I didn't see that, but did they make a bigger deal about him passing as they did when he failed? No, you know why? People like to see you. They like to see that. It, people are like that. I don't know why it's set up like that. I was on the expressway, traffic was jammed up. You know what was happening? It was an accident. But people pull over to the side to get out of their car to go look, to see somebody else's suffering. That's why talk shows are so popular. So people like to hear other people's misery, get it caught up in that. Then they go magnified in their own lives because that's all they focus on. Bob Boyd went to conquer his volcano like that gentleman who decided it doesn't matter how many times I fail. I'm going to courageously pursue it. I don't care what people say. I don't care what they think. This is something that I want that gives my life meaning and value. you got a volcano like that in you somewhere. When I think about the three pillars of something that would be your anchor, a foundation to drive you into the future, to live a big dream, to live a big life, what you think about, you bring about. You know, as a man think it, so is he. Dr. Carter G. Woodson said that if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. He said if you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, you never have to order him to go to the back door. He'll go without being told. If there's no door, his very nature will demand one. And I think that in many cases, governments and religious institutions have really unwittingly crushed the dreams and aspirations and, and the visions that people had of themselves. Not all, but a lot of them. And I think it's incumbent upon the individual to take responsibility, to develop yourself, to expand your mind, your vision, to seek out experiences. You know, Helen Keller said life it should be a daring adventure, it's boring. 
and start to dream. What do you want? What do you really want for your life? I remember going to Auschwitz and walking down the halls in the Nazi German concentration camps and seeing the pictures of men and women who had dreams. And these people were exterminated. And one of the things that I, I heard in my mind when I reflected on a book written by Viktor Frankl, who was there, he said, if you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow. And he talked about the people who were able to survive the inexpressible cruelties of Nazis, those who either believed in God or had someone that they loved that they were determined to see or some cause bigger than themselves. And in my case, my goal was to buy my mother a home. That was my big dream. And that caused me to read things and to listen to things to fuel my my imagination and then to develop my skills to become a voice of influence. And the other thing that's important is creating a community of collaborative achievement-driven, supportive relationships. And it started with a man, Mr. Washington, who said, a high school teacher, someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. It could start with one person, and then it goes from there. Associating with people who share your values, associating with people, like-minded people, who have dreams, who have goals that they're working on, and being in that community. S studies indicate that one goose can fly 40% further in formation with other geese than can ever fly by itself. In fact, I'm thinking about a scientific study where they exposed some rats to electronic shock, and after they increased it, it killed them instantly. But then they put these rats in, in groupings with other rats, and then what happened was that they continued to increase the shocks of these rats, and they increased it over 10 times more. It took far more to kill them than what it took with just one. And so there's something about being in a community of people who share your dream, who hold you accountable, who challenge you, who call you out, who can see what you can't see that you have within you. Inspire you to step up. Ebony Magazine, uh, the late John H. Johnson, who started that with a $500 loan from his mother, he said something in his book called Making It Against All Odds. There's no defense against an excellence that meets a pressing public need. And I suggest to you, one, work on yourself. To me, I think there are three pillars of, of what's required in order to, to carve out your place in this global economy. There are many steps, but there are three that I think is indispensable. One is working on your mind. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The second is of having a mindset and willing to discipline yourself make the sacrifice to engage in ongoing self-study for self-growth and development, developing your communication skills. I can hear Mr. Washington now say, Mr. Brown, develop your communication skills because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. Nelson Mandela said, if you speak from your mind, you speak in a language that a man can understand. But when you speak from your heart, you speak in his language. And so my goal in teaching people how to create mass appeal, how to change lives, that you first, you have to change yourself. It starts with you. And then you begin to see from your experience how you can begin to impact and influence others and be a voice of change. And that ability really will allow you to carve out a place for yourself in the marketplace. And the methods and the techniques, the simplicity of how you language what you say. Einstein said that genius is the capacity to take the complicated and make it simple. When you are creating change and mass appeal, keeping it simple with being the message that you bring and loving it and standing in your power and realize that you're here for a reason. I believe to make a difference. I believe to do a great work. I believe to live a life as Jim Rowan said, when you live your life, he said, your life can be either an example or it's a warning, a warning of what not to do or an example of what to do and what's possible. 85% of them reach their goals because of their attitude, 15% because of their aptitude. Now, to me, that was big because I was in special education. I was labeled educable, mentally retarded. So I say, whoa, that means I don't have to be the smartest guy in the room. That if I have a winner's attitude, that I've got a shot, that I could make it, that I don't have to live a life of being average. I want to live a life of meaning, of purpose, 
being adopted, I, I wanted to do something for my mother. And so by listening to motivational messages and reading on a regular basis, it really taught me the value of using your time to work on yourself, to develop yourself, to really restructure your belief system for what was possible for you. It, it really expanded my vision of myself. And so to me, that's what it means about mass appeal because I was working on myself. Then I started sharing it with others and I noticed the difference in them when I shared with them the things that I was doing because they saw the difference in me. And it's been said that a career is something you love so much you do it for nothing. So as I talk with and share with my friends what I was doing and what was possible for them, I eventually evolved into this life of where I am. And as a result, I carved out a market for myself. And because this is my passion, this is what I've spent the majority of my life doing, I've developed a level of expertise. Uh a level of strength and power and reputation in this area that created a demand for myself. To me, one of the most important things in the first step in changing lives is to have a program for yourself. When I started on this path, that was what my goal was, was to change me, given my circumstances. I think that, you know, psychologists say that we create a mental blueprint between the ages of one and five, that between that time, we determine what's available for us and what's not available for us. And so given my circumstances, being born in an abandoned building on a floor in a poor section of Miami, Florida, I became interested in a path of developing myself. I remember shining the shoes of Mr. Sadursky, this man that my mother worked for, very wealthy on Miami Beach. She cleaned his home and she cooked for the family and kept the children. And he listened to motivational messages, unbeknownst to me, that was programming my mind and it created a thirst within me to get on this path. I remember listening to Earl Nightingale who said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. And so to me, reading became an out. It became a tool that I used to develop myself and not just reading for enjoyment, but reading for personal growth, reading to look at those things that I read and to apply them in my lives. I would read sometimes at night from 60, 100 pages a night, sometimes a whole book. And then I would underline the book and I would think about them. I would memorize them and then I would apply them. I would try them out. All of us have seen our destiny at some point in time and we decided not to listen. We decided to ignore it, to know that's, that's not for me. And that's what causes many of us to give up on our volcano. The experiences and the challenges, the defeats, the disappointments and the failures of life that we decide to to sell out on our true potential, sell out on living our dreams, feeling that we're not good enough, not wanting to make any mistakes, particularly if you're raised with a great deal of criticism. So you've got to be willing to prepare yourself and do the best you can, take your best shot and let the chips fall where they may. And believe that everything is going to be all right. Take that leap of faith, trust yourself, and know within yourself that everything's gonna be all right. But aren't there some guarantees you can give us less? Yes. What is that? You're going to die. S excuse me? You're going to die. In case you didn't understand that, you can't get out of life alive. So I'm saying to you, you got six months to live. Live your life now. Live your dreams now. Live your life now. Live your dreams now. Start acting like this is your last day on the planet. 
This is the only life that I have. And that is my volcano. And I'm going to take the leap of faith. I'm going to jump in it. And I'm going to handle it because I know the you to be free. So I'll cherish every moment and every day. For your love has lit my path in everywhere. In the tender touch of your hand, I find the strength to rise and stand. Through every trial, every tear we've shed Your love's been the shelter where I find my bed For your love's been my anchor in life's stormy sea A beacon of hope guiding me to be free So I'll cherish every moment will never give me anything I don't have the capacity to handle. See, I say to you that you've got the power within you to handle any kind of volcano in your life, regardless of how it shows up, regardless of any kind of challenge that you might have in your life. I say to you, you got that in you right now. Where will it come from? Don't worry. If you trust yourself, it will come to you at the right time in which you need it.